Again, do I love the market tomorrow? Not until it confirms, but I like it enough to get us some value. Let me give you guys, give you guys a couple names uh, that I am watching for tomorrow's session. Um, check out, you know, check out this, um, check out this uh, lemonade. Lemonade has some, what's it? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. So I, I want to start off this evening with a quote. Today you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. That is a quote from Dr. Seuss, right? Dr. Seuss of all things. Something that all of us either have gotten read to as we were younger or read to our kids or something in between. All that stuff, green eggs and ham, thing one, thing two. Apparently, Dr. Seuss is now officially a racist character, okay? <laughs> the New York Post reported that Joe Biden has removed, and I'm reading this right from, from, from the feed, has removed the mention of Dr. Seuss from Read Across America. This is where we are right now, okay? You know, people are worrying about a lot of stuff, but this is where we are right now. All of a sudden, Dr. Seuss is racist. If that wasn't crazy enough, then my home state of New Jersey has now officially allowed children under the age of 18 to smoke weed and drink without the authorities, number one, not even arresting them, but they don't even have to tell your parents, right? So Dr. Dr. Seuss is a racist. Any 12, 13 year old is allowed to spark one up, right? In the middle of the day with no ramifications. Texas, congratulations, Texas. All our friends in Texas, congratulations. COVID is officially over. In a couple of days, you are allowed 100% capacity everywhere, right? Awesome. No masks, throw those away. COVID is over. Congratulations, your life is now 100% better than mine. And if that wasn't quirky enough or crazy enough, the market today had a very, very funny day, okay? And this is kind of what we want to talk about, kind of where it is. And I started you know, thinking about today's session and I'm trying to put my words into perspective of what I saw today. So yesterday we had this really, really big rally, very aggressive rally. Um, and the one thing that I kept on saying was, if you watched last night's video, last night was probably the worst value that I saw on the long side, considering the Dow just rallied up 600 points, the NASDAQ was up 300 points. Just, just terrible, terrible value. And the one thing we kept on reiterating, well, I kept on reiterating in last night's video was, as much as it was really great that everything kind of reclaimed supply and all that good stuff, we were not out of the woods yet because we were facing all the supply here. And if you look at today's session and you look at the final tally, you, you turn around and say, well, yesterday the, the Dow was up 600. The Dow was down 140. Yesterday the Nasdaq was up like three, 400 points. Today it's down 200. What's the problem? What's the problem? Here's the problem, right? Here's the problem. Number one, when we talked about morning strategy, I knew for a fact I had no interest of in being long today just because what well, we talked about in last night's video. You know, we got this whole area here of supply and a lot of names were touching, you know, we're touching that supply and anytime you buy a stock in the supply, nine out of 10 times, you're probably gonna get rejected. The issue was that a lot of names were acting very well this morning, right? Like a lot of names, you know, Google uh, acting very, very well. Netflix was acting very, very well. You can see like really aggressive candles coming up here and really not selling off the majority of the day. Uh, Apple was hanging out, this one was hanging out, Zoom had good earnings, it spiked, everything was all good, and then everything changed very, very quickly. And now we're, we're kind of stuck in a rock in a hard place. Again, I can make two arguments going into tomorrow. Matter of fact, if I had a room full of 100 traders, especially 100 new traders, I can make this very, very compelling argument. And that compelling argument is, number one from the bull case, well, you know, well bears, 
we just reclaimed, okay, we just reclaimed the 50 day moving average. The Dow was up 100 points. Everything was good. We gave a fraction of that back. Not a big deal. It's called, quote unquote, an inside day. That's bullish. Correct? I could take another 50 people, put them in a separate room, and then turn around and say, hey, look, that's right. They did all of this stuff. They did a fantastic job. But guess what? The bulls got rejected at exactly the same place we've been talking about now for the last three, four days. This 324 level of supply got rejected once, got rejected twice, got rejected three times, got rejected four times. And even though we held the five day moving average, okay, the, the bulls look like they're about to start looking at the market from the testing of the previous session or the previous channel of 311 lows. So you can really, really make a case that both sides are 100% correct going into tomorrow's session. What we did see today was, and again, if you believe in price action, I do believe in price action, theories are great, but if the price action doesn't complement or doesn't really confirm your thinking, well, what's the whole point of having a theory if it doesn't play out that way? And if you look at what happened today into the close and you started seeing some very, very aggressive price action, right? That's the best way of saying it. Here's kind of what happened, right? So we all like, you know, look at, look at the, some of these 60 minute charts going into the close today. Amazon got hit very, very aggressively. NVIDIA, and we'll, and we'll get to the pivots in a second. NVIDIA got hit very, very aggressively. Zoom, which by the way, you know, you know the whole, you know, the whole, um, the whole, the whole adage, you can mess up a wet dream. I messed up a wet dream. I, I had a perfect short on Zoom today. Perfect, perfect short. Um, perfect short. It couldn't get any perfect, right? Shorted it here, went down here. I covered some. And the problem was it stopped me out of my runner. And all it did was literally collapse about 47 points from where I covered. Okay? So you can see where I'm going with this. So... There's a lot of price action tonight that is very, very ugly. The bulls have a case going into tomorrow. The bears have a case in going into tomorrow. But the, but the thing, the one thing that we all know, and, we, and again, if you're watching this broadcast for the very first time, the one thing that, we're know, that I know for damn sure, I'm an idiot, I'm a terrible guesser, okay? And every single time I think I know what's going to happen and it doesn't confirm, my brains are completely blown out of my socket. That part I do know. So we have a very, very interesting, you know, session going into tomorrow's session. Everybody has a right to live tonight. Okay, the bulls have a right, the bears have a right. But now at least going into tomorrow, we have again, definitive lines in the sand. And I think no matter which side wins tomorrow, at least we have a very, very tight channel to tell us which way the wind is gonna blow. So we've seen here, we've got rejected four times on the QQQs at 324. Again, folks, there is no room for discussion. There is no room for debate. The bulls need to reclaim 324 in a close. If you're on the bearish case, and again, anything could play out. With this market, with Dr. Seuss being banned, with my 12-year-olds allowed to smoke a joint on her, uh, in, in between her recess and, and math club, okay? Anything in this world is possible. So for anybody to turn around and say, no, we're definitely going down tomorrow. Really? We're definitely going down? Or no, we're definitely going up tomorrow. Really? We're definitely going up tomorrow? So again, I'm gonna save my opinion. Nobody should really have an opinion because again, the price action, what's about to happen next is going to tell us where the next step of the market could be. So if we start accumulating stock above the 324 level and finally confirm, we're gonna go higher. And if we start taking down this 317, 318 level, then the next measure potential here is going to be uh, roughly around the 311 area that's held now. Look, 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 and this is how tight, just to give you an idea how tight the queues are. Look how many times we've held the bottom channel here. One, two, three times. Look how many times we got rejected off the top channel. Four times. Something's got to give, right? Something's got to give here within this lifetime of the next. Something's have to give here. And until that happens, folks, you are going to be subjective to a lot of ping pong moving at, at, you know, stocks up and down, up and down, up and down. Not as aggressive as distribution that we saw a couple of days ago, but you are going to see a lot of sell bias channels just because, again, people are now going to be playing 324 as, the, uh, as their max pain. And now people are gonna start making bets into the future consideration that we will turn around and start making a move back to this lower channel of 311. Gun to my head, and again, there is no gun to my head, but gun to my head, you know, you have to assume 
without making any bets. Again, we only bet until we see confirmation. But if I had to guess, and I'm a very, very bad guesser, I would say tomorrow we start, you know, start taking down this 318 channel and start moving back into the bottom of the channel 311. Again, think about this. We are less than a dollar away from this confirmation versus six dollars away from this confirmation. And as far as I know, I could do basic math, carry the one, carry the three, one more finger. We are a dollar away from the bottom of the range versus six dollars away from the top of the range. Again, we're looking to play very, very objective cards that are in our favor. So if you go through tonight's charts, you'll start seeing a lot of names that are looking pretty bad, or they're not yet at that point of sell everything, you know, the market's going to zero. Again, we're not talking about that. Anybody who, uh, you know, who's talking about considering, you know, constant fear mongering and the world's gonna end and you, you know, you should buy, you know, you should buy guns and ammo and alcohol. They might not be out of, you know, out of their minds, by the way, um, allegedly. Right, but they're not far off. This isn't doomsday, this is the market. Stocks go up, stocks go down, and now we're just looking for a clear sign because today was the furthest thing from clear. And I was sitting there and I go, and I actually tweeted this a number of times, I go, I'm so confused. And again, you don't need to know everything. You don't need to have the answer for every single question. I'm not perfect, I'm a human being, right? I'm gonna get things wrong. I'm gonna admit when I get things wrong. I'm confused tonight, but at least I have an objective opinion what I believe is gonna happen tomorrow. Uh, my watch list is set for the downside. I do have some names that I actually do like to the upside. Uh, Rocket, you know, Rocket Mortgage had this really a crazy, crazy move today. Is it so possible? And we started seeing, you know, you know, buyers today of the 40, the 45 calls, the 50 calls. Is it so crazy? It turns into one of these crazy movers and it goes higher? Absolutely not. You know, again, one of these things we're going to be watching for tomorrow, maybe some weakness into rising 60 minutes support. And if it starts building above today's channel, hey, who knows? Maybe this thing has a day to run. But from the, from the, point of looking things from reality, okay, you have to start looking at names like NVIDIA, right? Look at NVIDIA. We have a downside channel here that looks very, very good. Uh, if you look at Tesla, and again, I, you know, I had a trade in Tesla today. I lost some money in Tesla. I made it back in Zoom. I got nothing accomplished today. I really didn't. And then I shorted this LI. I got bored of the trade, you know, and then the stock collapsed. So I, I completely got nothing accomplished today. But the one thing that I didn't do was try to squeeze water out of a rock and try to force trades that weren't there. I would always rather play a different hand than sit there and, and try to overthink a day that I have completely no answers for, completely confused, but you know what? That's okay. That's how you stay out of trouble. That's how you, um, that's how you elongate your career. This is how you put, you put yourself in a position of strength. You don't need to have the answers. You don't need to know everything at all times. Let the market talk to you. And if you are wrong and if you are confused, right, stay the hell out of Dodge. Come to New Jersey, smoke a joint. You won't get in trouble. Your kids won't get in trouble. Feed your newborn cigarettes and coffee. What's the problem? What's the problem? So going into tomorrow, you know, there are names I like. Let me give you guys some names that I like and see what we have uh, for tomorrow's session. Again, do I love the market tomorrow? Not until it confirms, but I like it enough to get us some value. Let me give you guys, give you guys a couple names uh, that I am watching for tomorrow's session. Um, check out, you know, check out this, um, check out this uh, Lemonade. Lemonade has some, looks like some crappy earnings today. First close below support. If it starts building below today's price action, look how much room you have down. You have a lot of room down here. Um, I like NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA looks good as well. Maybe it doesn't test this bottom channel tomorrow, but you could see where it's going. If you have eyes, you could definitely see where it's going. So maybe it tests this channel and starts breaking down. You know, we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, Alibaba, right? Alibaba is breaking down as well. It had a couple of day run. It got rejected several times off the five day moving average. Who knows? Maybe if the market does pull and pull very, very aggressively, maybe it starts getting a move. You have a lot of room uh, to the downside. Uh, on the upside, there's some actually names that look pretty decent. You know, GRTS, a name um, that again, I really don't know anything about, but you know, look at what it did a couple of months ago. Now, again, a couple of months ago is not today. It's a completely different market, completely different sentiment, but you can't take away the fact that the stock did go from what, from six to 35? Who knows if this channel gets confirmed, why can't it wake up? It, the, the one thing that the market still has uh, that it did have from two weeks ago, people are still chasing. Maybe they're not chasing stocks up 
like GameStop up 500% in one day, but you can see with, with a rocket ship, people will still chase. So if a stock gets, uh, you know, if the stock gets going, you see a lot of option flow going into tomorrow's session, especially in a name like GRTS, considering its track record, what it had about a month ago, hey, who knows? As we saw today with Dr. Seuss, with New Jersey, with the state of Texas completely just conquering and just, just, just getting rid of COVID, um, anything is possible. And that's the point thing, guys. The one thing that you have to remember as a trader and a professional trader and an aspiring professional trader, you, need, you don't need to have all the answers. You don't need to be right. You don't need, don't need to make a spectacle of yourself trying to make comments and try to predict the future. We're all human beings. We're all gonna get things wrong. We're all gonna get things right. We're all gonna laugh. We're all gonna bleed. Most important part is we don't want to expire before we reach our potential. And tomorrow's session, yes, am I leaning to the downside of things? Absolutely. But at this market, it showed me what it shows me every single day. Anything is possible. Everything is probable. And the most important part is lead with your shield, not with your chin. Guys, God bless. Have a great day. And I'll see you on the field tomorrow.